So you want to learn how to make your own chimp strategies in BTD6. Well, this is the video for you. In this video, I'm going to be explaining the baseline formula and the entire process in a step-by-step -step guide on how to make your own chimp strategies on any map. So starting with your beginners, like from Monkey Meadow all the way through to Ouch, your experts. Doesn't matter which map you choose or which T5s, heroes, support, doesn't matter. This is the baseline formula for everything. So if you've ever wanted to make your own chimp strats and not watch my guides, then this is the perfect video for you. So let's jump into it. Obviously the first thing we have to start with is the maps. When you click play, what's the first thing you jump into? The maps, right? When it comes to choosing maps, you can choose based on whatever you feel. Maybe you want to play a map because you feel like it. Or maybe you want to play a map because it has a bonus reward. Or maybe you want to play a map because you haven't blackboarded it. Whatever the case might be, choose your map. That's the first thing you have to do. So for me today, it's going to be Dark Path because as you can see, I haven't done much on this map at all. I've only really unlocked this easy metal right here. And so we can kind of go through it together and figure out the strengths and weaknesses of the map, which is the first thing you really want to do whenever you try and create a strategy for any chimps map. So just looking at this map, what we see right early on is it's a single lane and that it has this kind of middle area. Now, what would the strengths of the map be? And when I say strengths of the map, I mean, what does the map do well that would stop us, the player, from easily beating it? So what makes it harder for the player to beat this map? And that is these site blockers right here. So this wall that kind of snakes around the entire map is a site blocker. If you place a sniper there, its site is blocked. It can't see the middle part here. You can really not see much of the track at all. And so these site blockers are a strength of the map. Another strength of the map is that it's relatively short. It's just got this straight line, a bit of middle part here, and then it exits right there. Now let's talk about the weaknesses of the map. Now weaknesses of maps are things that you, the user, the player, can exploit to make these maps easier. And the first weakness for this map are these pedestals right here. They give all towers a place on them height advantage, and in BHD6 that means anything with global range, like a sniper, if you put it on this height advantage, it can shoot the entire track. So compare this sniper that can see everything to this sniper that can see barely anything. And you see that these things give you a massive advantage in, in gameplay. The second weakness of the map, the thing we can exploit, is the fact that it's one one track, that it's one straight line pretty much, and we can use the heli pilot with the pursuit upgrade, which is insanely powerful on only on single lane maps. So all the maps in BTD6 have at least one weakness and one strength. Keep in mind that strengths are what the maps do well and weaknesses are what the maps do poorly. So weaknesses you can exploit and strengths you have to make up for in your strategy. So another great example of a map strengths and weaknesses is Ravine. Now this map is different to Dark Path in that it's much harder and that means that we can't just look at it and identify its strengths and weaknesses. Keep in mind strengths is what it does well. So what is most difficult for us to deal with on this map? And in the case of Ravine, it is this left track right here. Now you cannot identify that just by looking at it, you have to identify that through experience. And that's the other way that you'll learn the strengths and weaknesses of maps, besides just looking at them, is playing them. And because to play chimps you have to play hard standard, then ABR, then improbable, you should have a decent idea of what makes a map harder and what makes a map easier before you actually play chimps mode on it. So now that we've chosen our map, the next step in our process is to choose our hero. And the main deciding factor that you need to use when, whenever you're using a hero for your chimps is what does the hero do well in relation to the map? So how does the hero's strengths synergize against the map's strengths? So if we look at Dark Path, what are the strengths of the map? Site blockers, right? What counter site blockers? Etienne and Sai. They can both shoot over site blockers What's another strength of the map? It's short and kind of in straight lines. Which two heroes take advantage of straight lines? Gwen shooting fire in a straight line and Churchill also shooting in a straight line with his massive peers. 
Those are the kinds of thoughts that you need to be having whenever you're trying to select a hero for your strategies. Now let's think about someone like Sada, who's very commonly used on easier maps. She wouldn't really do too well on Dark Path because there's nowhere really good to place her. Same with a Pat Fusty. They're not really going to do too well because there's just not really any good spots to place them. With their really short range, we can't really place her or Pat here or here. We could maybe put her there, but she wouldn't do too much. And so those are the types of thoughts and knowledge that you need to have when you're choosing your hero for your strategies. So on Dark Path, the four we can really choose from to make the best strategy probably would be Psy, Etienne, Churchill, and Gwen. Now if we remember back to the actual middle part of Dark Path, we realize that that middle path seems like would be really, really good to beat with a mortar, right? Because the balloon circle in the middle and targeting a mortar there would be fantastic. Now, mortar synergizes really well with Gwen. As you can see, her level five gives signal flare, which is bottom path mortar, more attack speed. And so now you can see that strategy and that synergy starting to develop slowly. We could use Gwen with bottom path mortar. So let's assume that we're using Gwen as our hero. The next step is to choose our main DPS. And for the purposes of BTD6, main DPS really is the single tower that's going to do most of your MOAB damage after round 80 in chimps. So in this case, if we look at bottom path mortar, which remember gets buffed by Gwen, we can see that balloon sin is a really good choice. Not only because it has synergy with our hero, but also because it has a good synergy with the map, i.e. it takes advantage of one of the map's features, which is that middle area that the balloons spin around in. And so you can see now our strategy is starting to come together. We can use Gwen as our hero. We can use Balloon Sin as our main DPS. What's the next step? We need some cleanup. If you don't know, after round 80 in Chimps, Moab start spawning balloons out of them called Super Ceramics, and they're essentially normal ceramics with six times the health, which means they can't be cleaned up by normal towers. They need specific cleanup towers to deal with them. Now, if we remember that Dark Path is a single lane map, especially at the bottom, we can realize that something like a Spike Factory would do a really good job. And the best cleanup Spike Factory, of course, is Perma Spike. We could put one of these right at the bottom and it would take care of all our cleanup problems, not to mention be really good in the mid game. So the mid game refers to rounds 41 through round 79. So after the round 40 Moab and before the round 80 ZOMG. And the best mid games are gonna consist of towers that already build into towers you know are gonna be in your late game. So for example, we know we're gonna get Perma Spike for our late game cleanup. Well, a great mid game tower is Deadly Spikes and that can be our mid game cleanup. Same goes for Bloon Sin. We know we're getting it late game. That means we can get Shattering mid game and use that as our Moab damage or the mid game. Now, if you need some extra help in the early game, a good way to think about it is to think about what towers synergize early with your hero. So for example, if you're using Oban, he gives Jords more pierce. So they're a great tower to use if you're using Oban in the early game. We're using Gwen, as you can see, and for her, a great synergy in the early game is, on this map in particular, a top path Dragon's Breath with Gwen's level 5 because it gives it that little buff there as you can see, increased attack speed. So now that we have our map, hero, main DPS and cleanup all decided, the next thing we have to do is test our strategy. And the way you do that is challenge editor. So to access challenge editor, you want to click play social and edit challenge and here's your challenge editor screen it says create challenge the first thing we want to do is select a map so choose whatever map you want for me it's advanced dark path and then for chimps specifically we want to look at difficulty hard obviously game mode chimps starting cache default starting lives default 
max lives default, start round default, end round default, so everything as normal. And this is something that is different. You want to use the least cash special condition and you use this number right here. So 177,374. That is the exact amount of money that you make from the start of round six to the end of round 99. So that is the exact amount of money you make every single time you play chimps, no matter which map, no matter which strat. And the really useful thing about having this least cash counter is it tells you how much money you have left to spend in your chimps run. So that's really, really useful. I'm also gonna link a website in the description that will show you the information for all the rounds in chimps. So how much money you make, what wounds come, how long it takes, all that stuff. A very, very useful website. So if you need any info about that, it'll be in the description below. But once you have your chimp set up, make sure that everything else is standard. Wound speed, Moab speed, ceramic health, everything should be at 100%. And all this stuff can be disabled, it doesn't really matter. Make sure selling is off because you can't actually sell in chimps. And once you have your challenge editor set, you only have to do it the first time because after that, if you want to do a chimp strat on a different map, you just change your map like so. And if you want to change your hero, you can just change your hero like so. And you can see we have Adora now, we don't have to worry about anything. But for our purposes, we're going to be doing Dark Path with Gwen. And that's how you can get, make your challenges and test your strategy. Before we can even get into testing our strategy in Challenge Editor, first we have to talk about starts. Now, on s most maps, starts aren't really that difficult and you won't have to search them up on YouTube or anything, but for your harder maps, especially your hardest maps like Ravine, there is really only one start that you can do for some of these maps. So this start monkey has to be placed right there on strong. This start monkey has to be placed right here on last. And this start monkey has to be placed right here on first, even just to beat round six. So for the hardest maps, the best way to find out your starts is just to go on YouTube and search up Ravine Chimps, Ouch Chimps, Muddy Puddles Chimps, and just look at the guides that you see, you can use my guides, you can use Dario's guides, Unescaped's guides, really anybody's guides that has a replicable start, you can use those. Do not waste your time trying to make your own starts on these really difficult expert maps. It's a total waste of time, just copy them from other people who've already made guides on the internet. So now that we've spoken about starts, we can finally jump into Challenge Editor. So the first thing you're going to see with Challenge Editor is it starts off like a normal chimps game. You have your least cash counter right here at the top. And obviously the first thing you have to do is actually start on this map. So I'm going to start with a sniper in the good spot. And Dart Monkey about there. I'm going to put the Dart Monkey on last because it can take advantage of this straight line. Last is usually better for anything that shoots in a straight line whenever there is a straight line to take advantage of. Some tips for challenge editor is you can turn auto start on and just leave it on because if you lose you'll know that immediately and then you can just retry last round which is the whole reason that people use challenge editor in the first place to test their chimp strats because in normal chimps obviously you can't really have this button right here which is retry last round. In normal chimps this doesn't exist you just have to restart completely. But on Challenge Editor, we just retry last round. We saw that we lost to round 8, which means we have to do something different for, round, for this round again. So let's get another sniper down on that pedestal as well. And this is going to be your process to the early games for a lot of different maps. Harder maps, you may have to use different early games and come up with your own early games. Depending on which hero you use, for example, if you use Churchill, the start is going to be probably the same but the early will definitely be very different. Same with the Dora. If you're using a more expensive hero or just kind of a weaker early game hero like Azili, your starts and earlies will be a little different to what mine might be in my other guides. So you can see we just lost around 10. What does that tell us? We have to do something different again. So let's get a third sniper. Put it on strong as well. And make sure that you fiddle with 
targeting, oftentimes in early games, targeting is really, really important for snipers and dart monkeys especially. If you lose to a round and you can't afford anything, make sure you try changing the targeting before you actually just give up completely and retry from the start. But now it looks like we have a decent solid foundation, so we can jump in to getting Gwen. So before you get your hero, obviously turn off auto start, and then you want to place your hero in a, in a good position that takes advantage of their particular skill set. So the whole reason that we chose Gwen for this map is she shoots in straight lines, and this map has a few straight lines, as you see on the screen. So we set Gwen to last as well to take advantage of the straight lines, just like we did with our dart monkey. And now the setup is pretty much complete for this early game. We're just going to be transitioning into beating round 40, which is essentially what your early games are going to lead up to. After you get your hero, your setup should be beating all the rounds before round 40, obviously, and then beating that Moab. Here's the Moab. We managed to beat it because Wall of Fire is just really, really good and perfect on this map. Once you've beaten round 40, we're in the mid game, as I talked about before. And the mid game is all about just making a setup that can be pretty much permanent with tier 4s that you're going to upgrade into tier 5s later. So in our case that means getting deadly spikes as a save up to perma spike which we're going to buy later on. Here we get shattering, continuing our save up in the mid game. And also jungle drums because why not. A good tip with challenge editor is not to buy anything you don't need to buy and just let it run until you lose and then you know that you have to buy something to actually beat the round that you lose to. So we're at a point now where we can afford balloon sin. I'll buy that here just to show you how overpowered perma spike is. It's literally killing ZOMGs. Like what? But anyhow we have our main DPS now and we have our cleanup now. As you can see Buying your cleanup before you buy your main DPS is usually the better choice because especially if you're going to buy your main DPS after round 80, you definitely need your cleanup for Super Ceramics after round 80. So make sure you get your cleanup first usually and then you can usually afford your main DPS in the mid 80s. I got mine very late because I just wanted to show off how overpowered Pama Spike is. It's literally killing ZOMGs. And now we can talk about support. So we have our main DPS, we have our cleanup, and we have our hero. So now we can talk about support. And the great support tower for this situation is a middle path alchemist. Because it can see over obstacles. And if we set it to strong, it's going to do a lot of good work on ZOMGs. Another great support choice is a bottom path glue. I'm sure most of you know about that already. Moab glue is insanely useful on pretty much every map in every situation. Slowing down Moabs is very, very useful. I want you guys to understand that support can come in many different fashions. You can have a support tower with zero pops and then you can have a support tower with tens or hundreds of thousands of pops. It's, it's not about pops, it's about supporting your main DPS to do their job better. So we just lost the round 100 bad, which is perfect because that allows me the opportunity to talk about sources of bad damage. Now bad damage is something that's really, really important. Obviously most people know that. And this is a great tower now for bad damage Moab Shredder. In the most recent update 39.0, it's actually a good tower. Now you can stack a bunch of these near the exit, like so, one through zeros, and they'll do a lot of good damage. However, for us in this scenario, it's not going to cut it because we need some Spike Storms to do damage earlier. And keep in mind that Spike Storm is great on any single lane maps because there's only one path that the spikes are going to go on. If you're using it on multiple lanes, you definitely want to go for Smart Spikes. Make sure you set the targeting to Smart and then you can just use the Spike Storm as is. 
So a couple spike storms should do the trick, but another good source of bad damage is middle path bomb and also middle path sub. Unfortunately, there's no water on this map for me to place the sub, but I'm sure you all know first strike is a great tower to deal with. The bad, because it can one-shot it at the end of its lifespan. So with spike storm, all you have to do is just use it. And the bad should get destroyed, no problem. And that's how you generate a strategy in BTD6. So now that we've completed our first test run in Challenge Editor, the next thing we have to talk about is optimization. And optimization is really all about saving money before a certain period. So say you have your cleanup by around 80, but you need to afford your main DPS by around 85 when there's two ZOMGs and then 87 when there's four ZOMGs. That is all about saving money. So for example, you can cut the cross path on our Moab glue instead of getting splatter, we just leave it at bigger globs. Or when we have our Alchemist down here, we can get faster throwing instead of the middle path, which saves a tiny bit of money. Those are the kind of optimizations that you're going to be thinking about when you do your second and third challenge editor runs. Obviously in this run, money was not an issue, but if you're doing a harder map with a harder strat, money will definitely be an issue at some point. So you need to know how to save money. And a good example of that is the double discount villages. Just make sure that you know that it's actually worth it. You might have to do some math to figure out, do you save enough money with two discount villages? But usually it's gonna be worth getting two discount villages if you need jungle drums and radar scanner. Now we have to get to the most depressing topic in this video, and that is RNG. What is RNG? It stands for random number generator, but what it really means is the things that happen in chimps runs that you can't really control. That don't usually happen, that just randomly happen sometimes and aren't supposed to happen. It's those random occurrences that make chimps runs really annoying because any one small thing can happen and you lose one life and you're dead as compared to any other game mode where you have lives and you have a margin for error. And so when we talk about RNG, a lot of chimp strats, especially the ones that I try to make, have RNG prevention. Your easier strats and easy maps really don't have too much RNG, but harder strats on harder maps. So true advanced experts and true experts, and that just means the hardest advanced maps and the maps harder than that have quite a lot of RNG a lot of the time and so you have to actually dedicate a good portion of your strategy making to preventing RNG. Now the best ways to prevent RNG is simply just to not use towers that have RNG. For example, Balloon Solver is a great cleanup tower for Super Ceramic. It has no RNG. If you can do enough damage it will never let you down. Prince of Darkness, on the other hand, is also a cleanup tower, but it has a decent amount of RNG. So something may slip past, whereas with Bloom Solver, nothing slips past. Now, as you can see, they both have kind of different uses. Bloom Solver can't really see into the track, but Pod can. In any case, you should be thinking about the tower choices you make, and specifically for the maps that you're playing on, to prevent RNG as much as possible. Another way is to use towers that actually solidly help to prevent RNG. Such as Relentless Glue, because it just stuns everything. Cripple Moab's another one. And obviously the best choice is Spike Factories. These towers have no RNG whatsoever. But keep in mind that Alchemists do have a lot of RNG, especially if you're relying on this upgrade right here. Acidic Mixture Dip has a lot of RNG. Not so much with Berserker Brew, but if you're reliant, if your strategy is reliant on Acidic Mixture Dip RNG, you should probably just throw it out and make a new strat because it's really unreliable. So make sure that you know the towers you're using and are able to prepare going forward for RNG. To cap off the video, I'm just going to give you guys some general tips for making your own chimp strategies. And the most important tip of all is to have fun. The whole point of making your own chimp strategies and testing them out in Challenge Editor is to enjoy the process of it. If that isn't the case for you, feel free to take a break and just chill out. Chimps can get really intense sometimes, especially on harder maps with harder strats, 
So make sure that you don't find yourself burnt out on the game and hating the game. That is the worst possible thing that can happen. The next general tip is to synergize your main DPS, so your tier 5 that does your MOAB damage, and your hero. How we did in this run with Bloonsin and Gwen, she gives it a 20% attack speed buff, which is fantastic. All your runs aren't going to have that explicit level of a synergy between your hero and your tier 5, but aim to do some kind of synergy with them at as much as you possibly can. And we want to counter what maps do well with our T5 and our hero synergy. The next tip is Alk buffs. Alchemist is probably the strongest tower in the entire game, given that there's other towers in the game, and Berserker Brew is almost certainly the best upgrade you could ever ask for. It is a game changer in chimps. It is extremely, extremely powerful, works with pretty much every tower you're ever gonna use in chimps, and even does well on certain heroes like Churchill. So make sure that you take advantage of the Alk buffs. Just, just remember that there is RNG sometimes, but you can prevent that by placing them properly. On the topic of placements, BTD6 is all about placing your towers in the right spots. Oftentimes on expert maps, you'll have to place towers pixel perfectly just to start them off. Think about Sanctuary, Ravine, Ouch. All those starts need pretty much pixel perfect placements, otherwise you lose to round six. So if we just drag that out into the bigger picture, we realize that placing our towers is really, really important. And sometimes you'll do a chimps run on challenge editor and you mess up a placement initially that has a domino effect going forward. If that's the case, you just have to restart the run. That's what happens a lot of the times. It's happened to me before. It's happened to everybody who's ever done a challenge editor run. Don't worry if you mess up a placement in Challenge Editor, you can always come back and do it again. It might be a little bit painful, but I think you'll find that it's worth it. On that note, I hope you enjoy this video. It is a bit of a long one, but I wanted to cover as much as I possibly can about trying to make your own chimps guides. The most important thing, like I said before, is to have fun. 